coming. It really means a lot that you've taken some time out of your day to come and see us. My name is Lee Wills, and I really am very proud to introduce my team to you. So today, Sally King is this move forward here. Sally does absolutely magic work with our folds. And then I've got Michelle, who's come over from New Zealand as well with us. And she does a wonderful job with our mares. We also have Hasia here, who is Raymond. And Hasia is from Belston Park. And Belston Park has kindly lent us the lovely mare and foal here. So the mare's name is Connie, and the foal's name is Belston Melody. And I'll, we'll talk a little bit about them later on soon. Just so I've got a bit of an idea of my audience, can you please put your hands up if you have owned the foal or own the foal at the moment or I have Excellent. You're on work with We've got no few. How about so? That's this side. Excellent. Thank you. And can you also please let me know who was here yesterday? Oh, God. Okay. Excellent. So we're all on this side and we're here yesterday. Yes. They're very different. So what we are going to do today is we are going to change it around a little bit because we're moving forward. And it is a process of educating the folks. So first, it's a very exciting day because as we were introduced, it's been, we've done over 15,000 sessions and it's now been over 2,000 folds. And we've learned all these things from the horses because our process really just was very organic and actually did work from the horses. And so we finally get a chance and we, to actually present in Australia, which is huge for us. It's our first time presenting here. So, we're so excited that we can pass on information. So we have a lot that we would like to pass across to you and share with you. And so during the demonstration, we'd also like to take questions from you to understand kind of what kind of things you would like to know about. So all three of us ladies, we all have come from training behavior background. So Michelle does her real specialty is our Kaimanawa Heritage Horses in New Zealand, which are probably like the Brunwick horses here. So our wild horses are uh, Michelle's specialty. Sally and I are, or have been, Monty Roberts instructors. So I was the first student to become an instructor in the world and was on a panel of six girls who wrote on this program to the world. And when we started the school in 2000 in New Zealand, we were the third country in the world to have a school. Sally's done incredible work with Monty, and she was a co-presenter with him here at Ekwatan in 2001. Uh, she's also written books, so if you see some of Monty's books, if you open them up, you'll see Sally King's name written in there. And also, Sally has now been named as one of Monty's what they call master instructors. So she's one of six in the world that have been chosen to take Monty's teachings further forward into the future. So it's a fantastic thing for Sally. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the system and how it evolved for us. So it actually started back in 2003 and what I'm going to direct you from a gentleman called Sir Patrick Cogan, who if you're from New Zealand you probably know who Sir Patrick is. And he runs a very successful stud there and is a leading vendor in the thoroughbred world called Cambridge Stud. And what he wanted us to do was to edu start educating his foals. Now he was quite adamant with us and he didn't want anything to affect the mere fold on, so we started at, he never wanted to get us to do anything before three weeks of age. So we've actually started uh, at three to six weeks of age, and I'll talk about that later on, how that works for us. But three to six weeks of age is kind of magic time for us. So the other thing that we've really learned about the mares, and it took about 3,000 sessions for us to understand this, was that the mares are really the key to our work. So if I thought about it 3,000 sessions prior, instead of just being focused on my goal that I wanted to achieve, I would have thought that what the goal knows is the mare, so it's only made sense that I actually start with the mare. So for us, the mares are huge. We always make sure we've got a relationship with the mare first because not only do we need her to calm so the foals calm, we also need her to actually kind of almost switch off the foal and allow us to work with the foal. So hopefully today, I'm not sure how it's going to go, but we'll talk you through and let you know how it is going with them. 
The other thing we found is it takes us on average between six to nine sessions for the polls to learn the behaviours with us. We do very short sessions, just like you've seen today, but very short. And these different things, can you hear me talking like Michelle? So the behaviours that they learn at this age, at three to six weeks of age with us, some things they learn we want them to be able to not react to. So when we look up to them, we just want them to stand, when we put the hot dog on, we want them to stand, we don't want any reaction. Other things we do with them, we do want a reaction. So if we are asking them to move forward from their halter, and you'll see Sally asking the halter to move forward later on, or she's using the figure of eight rope to ask the pole to walk and lean forward, we want a reaction from that. So the pole needs to understand sometimes we have a reaction and sometimes we do. And then with these feet it almost becomes trickier because Sometimes when we press her down their knees, we just want them to stand still and not react to the touch. And then even when we pick their feet up, we just want to up and down. And it's not until the goal over the six to nine sessions that we need to graduate with us, it actually know how to balance itself and physically step across and balance. We'll, we'll show you that soon. So what I'm going to do is ask the goal to do two sessions with you today. Now, because of doing this in demonstration, we are asking, it's not typical for us to do this, and especially this folks had a big ask that came in Wednesday night. We needed a kilometre here yesterday, we did two sessions of kilometre back in the same this morning, and it's been out for a couple of months around. So we we'll just see how it goes with this fold, because for us, you know, we are very indebted and we just think these folds are amazing, we're setting them up for life. But that one woman, this little guy, he's got such a good future in front of him that we don't want to upset him. We want to keep everything really good for him, like we do with our other folds that we do. So I'll just introduce this lovely man and fold. So Casey are over here with a big smiley face, which we've been very, very fortunate to work with. So Casey is, is at Bellstone Park, and they have an amazing sire, which is the sire of Bellstone Melody here. And later on today, if you're in the Breed Village, between 12 and 1, you'll be able to see Casey riding the Sire. Now his name is the Belston Fox, which I think is the most fantastic name. And he is huge, like as you said. He's 18 hands, and he's like a huge 18 hands. Why is he this fantastic? And Casey will do some um, work with dressage, and then also has a, a painting type as well, show jumping type. So please go down to the green village. And also, even if you just go straight after here, you'll be able to go and meet him, and they're at B14. So that's the sire, the Belston Fox. And the mare, Connie, she is a 12-year-old mare, and she's actually had, this is her sixth foal. And she is an Irish school horse. And so I didn't say that the Belston Fox is actually a registered Irish uh, draft, thank you. Know. <laughs> Irish draft, which makes Belton Melody, is a like a three quarter draft and a quarter thoroughbred. Now, the reason that they mix these two is that they really want the power elements and the trainability of the Irish draft and then this, the athleticism of the thoroughbred, which they find works really, really well for them. So this, this mare here, her full brother is a three-star inventor. So little Belston Melody has got a huge future in front of What we have found out about the foals is, and we saw some research running, is how they are as, when we first work with them, is generally how their temperament stays. But he's got an incredible temperament. He was completely untouched four weeks ago. And he hasn't been touched for the first four weeks of his life. It's really only since Wednesday he started doing anything. So he, yeah, he's just going awesome. So what I'm going to do for this session is I'm going to hand you over to the girls and wish over to Michelle to bring the whole the marriage position and Sally will start working. And I'll pass you over and you'll we'll be very, well, very lucky to watch Sally do the magic work that she does in the fold. She does the awesome job. As Lee was saying, Bellstone Melody is four weeks of age and he had literally never had a hand on him until Wednesday when he came in here. Um, 
So he got over onto the floor, he did slip off the rack, so he just grazed himself on his own pot, you see his little black wet rack there. He still sound and pumped with a lot of, but I probably won't pick up that foot. Um, but he, he's had a crash course in intensive um, habituation and handling since Wednesday. Um, so working with the foals in such a public arena does tend to be a little bit of a compromise for the foals, because even coming into a float, spending the night in stables, walking a kilometre up to here, all of that is way more pressure than he's ever had. Um, so when we work with him today, I have to recognise that he's already been placed under a lot of pressure, so I'm not going to get so much the typical cold reactions. Uh, so he's been very tired, um, he, is, he is very non-reactive by nature, not at all flighty, as you can see. So he's, we, we did two leaving sessions with him before the show started, two 10-minute sessions, because we had to um, because we had to leave him up here for safety reasons. Then he had the two sessions yesterday in the public demonstration. So he's had only a four sessions, but done a lot of leaving to get here. So he hasn't done a lot of work with his feet, but he has done a lot of work with the leaving. So the first thing I'm going to do here for is to put them into position. And I'm happy to put him into position by moving him with my body. Now this is the safest position for him. And you can see he's coming around, he's wanting to nip. He's a typical cop, but what you're seeing, the nipping behaviour, is as a result of the pressure we're placing on him. Uh, it's not so much in play. And I, I appreciate that and I acknowledge that, but at the same time he still has to do his work. So he still has to do his job and I'm going to you today. So when I, when I work with Mel, I want to keep my body as close to him as he is to the mare. So those of you that are directly behind or in front of the mare, you can see that he's, he's been keeping his body reasonably close to the mare until he's just moved away. He's not quite touching, so I'm going to mirror that gap and be about the same distance away as he is. One of the first things I want to achieve is to pick up his feet. I just need to make sure he's square back into these pads so that if he wants to pick, he can say. Now I need to balance his feet. He's only picked up his feet twice in his life and he's got a bit of a, a sore knee. So I need to make sure that he can balance when we pick up a foot. So the first thing I do is I run my hand down the leg and make sure the leg stays on the ground, which it did. That was great. So it's just a, a kind of a couple of seconds. I run my hand down the leg, it stays on the ground. I'll pick it up and I'll put it back on the ground as well. And then I need to rebalance and go front foot. Again, I'm keeping my body really nice and close. So if he needs support, I can get it on. I know all of you that are behind the mirror, but I can't see this bit, sorry. And he's getting lovely, really relaxing his leg into my hand and allowing me to pick it up and put it down. That's great, that's exactly what I want to see. Yeah, 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 so I'm just running my hand down as far as the band to make sure he's comfortable with that which he is. On the front leg, run my hand down. If it stays in position, pick it up. Run my hand down. And it's not quite as relaxed as his front leg. It's a little bit harder for him. And if you can see, you can see his back legs are a little bit too close together, which doesn't allow him to balance his knees. So I'll pop him back on the mat now. I just want to ask him to come a little bit off pressure. So just to set his both front feet, I'm happy with that. Again, he's not fear-based at all. He's not anxious about that my um, being close to him. He's not wanting to move away or to break. Many of the folds we work with, 98% of which are thoroughbreds, as soon as they come off the mare in response to the pressure on the halter, they'll spring back. Um, Spring back like a rubber band right against the knee. You can see this little fellow is really confident being out here. Even though he's never been handled until um, four days ago, he's just a very non-reactive breed type. 
and a great example of the Irish Books of Three. So we you might go to do anything you want me, I want to be back in position. So if you were to move forward, Michelle would be there. Sideways on there and back in position. So the next step is to put the full rope on. We use a figure eight rope that was originally supplied by our mentor, Monty Roberts. And then we've added just a little knee rope function at the front of it so that we can switch a little bit of steering on the fold to get at the same time as doing forwards and back. One of the benefits of this rope is that it can't fall off unless you can fold the fold over. So what it got done. What will happen is even if I need to let him go and he'll be there if he's playing or doing anything and I, I get let, let go of him, he will, um, he will just canter around with the ropes on and he'll cut back in. And quite safe. Go into position. Yeah. So as I said, he's done a lot of leading, but what we did was we had a really good team around us who stood, we walked up the side and so I didn't even do anything apart from um, apart from to stay attached to him for the trip. So he hasn't learned left, right, spell, or stop particularly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yesterday he just finished his second session by going around the knee here. So I'm going to go back to where we finished and see how he is there. Still, I'm pretty much just a passenger. I'm using my body a little bit to suggest his direction. But he doesn't yet understand the cues very well to, to stop and go. So I'm just going to try and introduce a little, slow my foot fall down, lovely, a little bit of pressure on the chest rope, and he stops. Start to move my body, pull my hand forward so there's a little bit of pressure on the butt, and he moves forward. Try another little stop, slow my foot fall. So I'm really not um, needing to use the ropes very much. He's just reading my body language and responding to that, which is lovely, but he does need to understand the cues themselves. And he's having a little bit of a play, I think. Which is fine. We, we're happy about them playing, particularly if Paul is not that confident. We like to see them play as they kind of explore themselves and their options to learn. So I'll just keep it playing, we'll just keep working. So I'm putting a little bit of more um, pressure on the right now as I ask for the different cues. Use the feet to get a stop, drop my run, off we go. As Lee was saying, the ball's concentration span is so short, you know, they're just like a toddler really, that we do need to keep our sessions really short. Our average session is probably nine minutes, you know, 12 minutes, which this one session will get is probably long sessions. See him looking at the shoe, a little play in the back. Stopped and now he's looking and showing him the lesson that teacher. And that's like a bit of a real way. I'm going to try and see if I can get a stick of backwards. Show him what I want with my body. A little bit of pressure on the front, alright? Alright. Alright, can you show us if you want to take it back and take the knee back in position? Thank you. 